I'm answering the call from a subscriber on Reddit who wanted more vehicles from the sci-fi genre. I'm also here to say, if you clicked on this video, you're likely both wrong and right. The scooters themselves are cool, but yes, the chase scene is dumb. I've been talking about Cinemotive Design for almost two years. Cinemotive Design isn't a new thing. Along the same line of costume design, the production designer's job is to make sure the environment matches the character, and that extends to the vehicles those characters drive. Francois Audouy brought on Nick Pugh to design both the futuristic limo for Logan to drive in his final film and the antagonistic fleet of Reaver vehicles. Logan is dystopian sci-fi, the kind that exists on world but includes the higher level of vehicle design that exists in Star Wars spaceships and land speeders. The first image we see in the Star Wars franchise is a blunt forced, soft textured ship being chased by a looming sharp destroyer. Cinemotive design excellence from the beginning of the Star Wars franchise. But I have a new thesis in this essay. It's really the same, but with an emphasis on what I just said, Cinemotive design is about matching the right vehicle with the right character. This I've been saying for the past 16 months. But Cinemotive design is not matching the vehicles to the world. Let's get into it, but we gotta keep it short and sweet because I have baseball practice to get to. So to begin this paper slash video, let's talk about these characters as a collective band and who their Star Wars father is, the malevolently beloved Robert Rodriguez. When talking about Rodriguez's filmography, the supporters are quick to bring up Machete. The detractors are quick to point out Sharp Boy and Lava Girl, and the legends stand beside the man who gave them the Spy Kids franchise. Cake. Robert Rodriguez has a self-made, colorful style to his on-screen entertainment. It obviously gets transferred over in the Street Gang's character development, infusing the sandy sameness of Tatooine with splashes of color and shine. Robert Rodriguez made some bad episodes. We can all agree on this. You don't have to love everything he does, but we do need to understand where these characters come from. And so, the question of, what are they? Shunning the cyborg term, they've instead allowed themselves to be referred to as the mods. In real world history, mod refers to a subculture that developed in 50s UK and directly influenced George Lucas's second full-length film, American Graffiti. This would also later influence the punk rock movement in 70s UK explored in Cruella. The part about American Graffiti likely isn't news to the people who clicked on this video. If you're searching for something to nitpick about, you've usually already done your research. The mods in Star Wars get their name from modifying their bodies with cybernetic enhancements, not unlike the Reavers we talked about earlier in Logan. But the term mod in the 50s and 60s, which influenced the Star Wars variants, comes from the previous generation calling this trendy group modernists for their taste in music, fashion, and motor scooters. Take a look at the scooters of the era and you'll see similar design elements in those found in the streets of Mos Espa. At the same time, current day low-level street gangs still use mopeds in their territories. I grew up in a town where this would happen. You didn't need a formal license to ride a moped and mopeds are cheap, so there were small gangs of teenagers Youths. who would put around on their plastic scooters. A little comical, a little annoying, and still only a minor anecdote supporting the cinemotive design of this low-level street gang staking their claim with speeder bikes. I don't know if Rodriguez was the sole developer of this crew, but the Star Wars team did their research in creating a group inspired by George Lucas's early work while pulling historical evidence from the mod era. These bikes are an homage to the early days of George Lucas's filmmaking career. Those providing commentary for these bikes have already brought up American Graffiti, and then they continue to say, I get where they come from conceptually, but they look like crap on Tatooine and therefore I don't like them. And then the other side says they probably came from Coruscant. Maybe the scooters did. Maybe. But at the very least, Drash grew up in Mos Espa. The street gang seemingly isn't new in town. Besides all this, does it matter that they look like crap in Mos Espa? Of course he does. Only sort of. You're not wrong to have your own opinions, but forsaking design evidence just to support the first opinion that pops in your head is stupid. Of course a cheap Chinese EV doesn't look right in Kansas. We get it. But cars don't belong to their environment, their state, their country, their continent, their planet. They belong to their characters. While seeing a Chongli EV zooming around the plains of Kansas will draw a few snickers, likely the person driving it will be having the time of their life. And asking does this person, this character, belong is dangerously prejudiced. As far as you providing judgment of their personal aesthetic, there's probably a Zuko character arc in your near future, but that's what I'm here for. Do these cyborgs belong on world? It's easy to get confused about this question, and you might mistakenly say, no, they don't. Cyborgs don't belong on Tatooine. Color doesn't belong on Tatooine. But there are already examples of each. 
Luke and Anakin, both cyborgs of their own, originated on World. The concept of cyborgs in the Star Wars universe existed from the very beginning. He's more machine huh, than man. So I'm sure it's just confusion when opposition says these concepts don't belong. These mods have scooters that are directly influenced by the subculture which provided their namesake. Some of these scooters design aesthetics exist in real life, just take away the wheels. While hopefully I was able to change your mind about the bikes themselves, I could never hope to sway your opinion of the chase scene. It was poorly crafted, but every other time I've seen these scooters in pairing with their riders, to me, it's been a natural development of the character without distracting from the story. Because what's more distracting from a story about Boba Fett than a whole episode that doesn't have Boba Fett in it? I didn't need to say that. I have a lot of love for both The Mandalorian and Bryce Dallas Howard. What's up? I'm gonna cut in here real fast while I'm editing. I wanted to ask you guys, leave a comment below if you guys are seeing both Dona Media's Batmobile and Initial D videos and my videos. I'm trying to see something. Thanks. Hopefully it was as short as it possibly could be. There have been a couple of videos I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on, like Bulma's Renault 5 Turbo and World of Warcraft's Goblin Hot Rod. And those end up being longer videos than anticipated. But let's finish this one out. There are entire fleets, Imperial, Rebellion, Nubian, Coruscanti, Kimino, and what I'm saying is if you're getting all up in arms about these so-called Vespa speeders, but you're going to let the J-Type 327 slide on the desert landscape of the same planet, then you're really just a color snob. Cinemotive design isn't about matching the vehicle to the color space in the landscape behind them. That's what cinematography is for. And you can get some beautiful shots from it, but cinemotive design is about connecting the audience to the story. Conversely, a lot of beautiful cinematography is about inviting the audience to experience a beautiful moving picture. Both are extremely important when selling on-screen content, but my channel has a focus. The reason for that is because I want to go beyond the question, does it look pretty? Because if we were to paint the Annihilators or Scorpion X, those upgraded destroyer droidicas, then we'd have the same snobby issue. At some point in your own character's journey, you need to go through the growth that all colors, textures, and lusters can coexist in the same galaxy, the same world, the same city, the same town. But enough politicking. Are these Vespa speeders the right vehicles for the mods? As a low-level street gang needing the small footprint and maneuverability for subtle jobs, the concept of scooters is really appealing with real-world application. Does adding color make sense? For sure, if you're going to add colorful mods to your body, then of course the extension that you'd add color to your vehicles checks out. Do these scooters play out well in a low-speed chase? No, definitely not. They look sluggish and clunky, but these aspects are easily fixable as the Mecha Salesman YouTube channel has proven. They can get away with Vespa speeders as their character's vehicle even if they can't get away on those speeders. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.